Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Breaking Barriers in an ASD Kind of World. I am Amanda Ford. I am Teal Marchand. And I'm really excited to follow up from our last episode. I really wanted to jump into something that you said at the end of the, the last episode that we were talking about and your experience as a actress and how you kind of use those skills that you've learned to work with individuals with special needs. I don't know if you want to touch a little bit more on that. Yeah, sure. So, um, I am an actress and I've taken a long uh, leave of absence, uh, but a intentional one, much needed one due to a uh, family tragedy. Mm -hmm. And um, so, when I started working with kiddos and that was just out of nowhere I've always mm -hmm. done motivational speaking with youth at risk mm -hmm. uh, different things like that with kids and empowerment speaking but I got involved with some good friends of mine who had um, a physically disabled son mm -hmm. who unfortunately has succumbed to um, his his issues mm -hmm. and it kind of opened my eyes to um, kids in particular with mm -hmm. disabilities. And mm -hmm. So that's the Fragile Hearts, Fragile Hearts organization, FragileHearts.org. And I thank Stormé Sweet and Joe mm -hmm. Sweet as just people I've known for a very long time that really, sh you know, showed a world to me that I wasn't as mm -hmm. familiar with. Yeah. So fast forward, I um, had someone ask me about working with a kiddo that became my client. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because the parents would say, why is Teal so good mm -hmm. at getting this kid to respond in a way that the parents couldn't do? Yeah. And to me, it was just second like, nature. I was like, okay, do this, do this, whatever. And this is after, obviously, a lot of training yeah. I, was go I had to go yeah. through and uh, to get this new skill set, right? Mm -hmm. And they did not know, mm -hmm. and only a few do, yeah. <laughs> that I come from the acting world. Yeah. So that's really what it was. I had to go really, you know, it's not all me. I mean, yeah. I had to learn a, a heavy skill set, yes, in uh, behavior therapy, but also um, I was really pulling mm -hmm. from, you know, the world of acting, yeah. of social skills and getting um, how to do repetition and getting mm -hmm. things done and all of that and we had a good time it's like the kids just have a good time yeah. and when I remember one family called me and said so yes um, what, what, what's going on with these books that you read mm -hmm. to the kid and you know I had to make do these voices and I was like ah oh, sorry about that yeah yeah I do all the inflection of characters yeah, yeah. and everything and they were like well I can't my kid I can't expect me to do that every time I read yeah. a book to them and I, in my head I'm like oh, why not and, you know, it's funny because I think um, we help parents, and we'll talk about mm -hmm. how you got into the field too, we help parents tap into, or all family members, tap into their, you know, inner mm -hmm. child. Yeah. And I know it's awkward when you just don't have that in you, when you're like, I'm a grown adult, mm -hmm. I don't feel like being a kid today, I don't feel like doing roof, roof, meow, I don't feel like doing any of those things. Yeah. I don't feel like it. But... For me, mm -hmm. because I was resistant to this career, mm -hmm. um, but I needed and wanted something else yeah. because I'd like to consider myself also a, a businesswoman, mm -hmm. right? And when I took that leave of absence, I, I, I was doing some things in business too, yeah. you know, yeah. um, like a silent private owner in a, in a restaurant business with mm -hmm. a couple of my friends. I mean, I had very little <laughs> <laughs> private, you know, um, ownership in it, yeah. but that was great for me. I, I loved it. And I've, again, I've done some things behind the scenes, mm -hmm. right? I was always still working on things behind the scenes. So now I'm presented with developing this new skill set. but once I knew it could benefit me also in a bigger way mm -hmm. and you know you're trying to I think anyone who's in the arts and you're trying to merge passions mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. but you still have interest in other things yeah so because I have interest in consulting and mediations and advocacy yeah. and maybe because a lot of people in my family are lawyers mm. then um, and low-key okay for the record let me just go off topic yeah no for the record I think in 
my head, mm-hmm. I'm an attorney. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so in my head, yeah, yeah. I'm an attorney. Just let's just be clear. And my cousin, who's now a, an elected judge, she will yeah. tell you that I basically mm-hmm. went to law school with her. So mm-hmm. basically, I'm an honorary yeah. attorney. So that's the running joke. And, yeah. And another friend of mine here, she's an actress, a great actor friend of mine, but she also started in law. And we go through this repetition of, I'm really a lawyer. Yes, yeah. you are a lawyer. The fact that I have people who feed mm-hmm. into this is yeah. awesome. So thank you people for feeding into it, Kate. And my cousin Shauna, yeah. they know who they are. They feed into this, and I just believe I'm a lawyer. So with that said, I love writing wrongs, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I love um, just, I, I don't know. I love being the voice of reason. When I did Beauty Shop, I remember uh, the stage play Beauty Shop, that they we would have these power meetings, and <laughs> I spoke once, and then a, a cast member said, my lord, mm-hmm. you know, like, you really are the voice of reason. Yeah. I'm imperfect. Let's, I'm not toot my horn that much, but what I'm just trying to say is that is my passion to bring mm. together, to mm-hmm. bring people together, yeah. have some common thread there. And I like to see that with the family. So mm-hmm. when I got into working with kids and doing social skills to help their behavior, that's what I thought about. Like, how can I use this skill set on a bigger level? Yeah that benefits them but can benefit and feed me too because mm-hmm. we we still have to be happy you know, yeah in, in what we're doing right and that's what it was it was creating theater yeah. for these uh young people creating theater and having them change their narrative through social skill sets yeah. but like i was saying in the last episode then i would go to my acting classes yeah. and and have these aha moments like oh literally i'd yeah. be in the middle of it going oh wait a minute we're just I just worked with this with my kiddo. And it was weird how in my head I said, wow, okay, this is like a full circle moment. Yeah. And when I have to allow space for a kiddo that maybe has had a meltdown Mm -hmm. because they don't feel right Mm -hmm. and they don't know why they're doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They don't know why their action was just that, Mm -hmm. right? And then they would have a meltdown and later want to talk about it and express themselves. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and want, they want it to be cr- cr- corrected, mm-hmm. excuse me, they want it to be corrected, the positive reinforcement that mm-hmm. they needed. I started looking at myself the same way. In acting yeah. class, like, I hated the repetition, like, don't have me do this yeah. repetition, you know? Mm-hmm. But you did the repetition. Yeah. And then when you get the feedback and how it felt, mm-hmm when it was uncomfortable, yeah, you know? Mm-hmm. And even when it's comfortable feeling vulnerable again. Mm-hmm. Because in the recent years, me coming back in, into the field, you know, it's it's been different. And I've been okay with that. Yeah. I've been okay mm-hmm. that it's, it's, I'm adaptable. Yeah. I've been okay that it's been different. But I always have my kiddos in my head mm-hmm. because I think of how it has all come full circle. Yeah. You know, and what we talk about, mm-hmm. giving space and allowing all of us in whatever challenge we have yeah. or whatever fear we're facing mm-hmm. to still be able to use our authentic vo- voice like your sister said caitlin and express yourself and not be afraid to express yourself yeah i love that some of the things that i want to pick up from um just what i was taking from your your words is uh the importance of self-expression and i think that how self-expression can be done through the arts and through acting and Mm -hmm. it is actually different yet it works so well with the therapy that we do because I mean we've talked about this like therapy we we want to stay kind of away from that (laughs) because we're not pushing it on anybody but but what I think is really interesting um, is how well it works Mm -hmm. within the therapy and the importance of just being able to allow like i think the arts whether it's music therapy or dance therapy acting as a therapy too oh my gosh, yes is i think really different and and something that a lot of people could get behind mm-hmm. with within the autism community as well because we are teaching social skills right and i think something that's really um interesting in in the autism community right now uh for the neurodiversity movement is 
this idea of masking that a lot of um, actually autistic individuals have been bringing forward and saying, uh, we are coming into this neurotypical space and are masking who are autistic traits. How do they do that? It's they're kind of learning how to act um, in, in our world. And wow. something that I want to kind of touch on for both, and, and it's okay to mask, but I also want to give this as a space where it's okay for us to accept people the way that they are too. So it's this dual wielding of teaching our kids to have these social skills and to do it in amazing ways where it's like you can express yourself through this acting mode and the work that we as neurotypical people need to do in accepting people even if they don't have those skills too. Right. So I, I just I, I wanted to just pull on no, those, I think, those things. No, I, I think that's good to know and, and that's one of the things that we want to do mm -hmm. here. Uh, if we can back up and talk about one of the reasons why I wanted to, to do a show like this and you as well, we just, we want it to be different. Yeah. We didn't want this to be just an autistic mm -hmm. podcast. Yeah. You know, we want this inclusive as well, but yeah. we definitely want this to be a platform where we can share some things mm -hmm. that we experience and how we feel about it Yeah, and, um, and give space, mm -hmm. right? We may have a little rant yeah. <laughs> about some things and, but also for families, or people to just listen in, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, there's different things for different people, right? Yeah. There's a little bit. Somebody may like this, but they may not like that. We want this to be a place where someone can choose to like us or not, yeah. and be like, "But I like what they're saying," and I. We want to be able to give resources mm -hmm. and and talk about just all kind of things from health and nutrition, yeah, um, to you know highlight um, places to go. Mm -hmm highlight people who are doing different things in the community yeah. for people on autism. For instance, I have volunteered before with the Miracle Project. Mm. Check out the Miracle Project. If you don't know about this organization, please check them out. And so again, kids are in singing and dancing mm -hmm. and performing. And I know um, I had time restraints, a schedule restraint that uh, kept me from being part of one of their performances mm -hmm. about uh, maybe a few years ago. Yeah. COVID has changed the game. I don't yeah. even know what year. You're like, what year is that? <laughs> okay. But, but I was there volunteering and, and, and being a part of um, their program and acting. Um, these kids were amazing. I mean, yeah. a couple of these kids were professional actors mm -hmm. and guest starred on The Good Doctor. Um, oh, I have to think about it. I, I make him pull it up real quick. Miracle Project was also a part of a, a, a film. Um, just check them out. Yeah. They are so amazing. Here's the thing. Again, I've worked with kiddos where parents are surprised, mm -hmm. rightfully so, yeah. of maybe what their child can do, mm -hmm. right? Because I think all of us, I'm a parent, yeah. all of us can get caught up in our day-to-day -day routine. Mm -hmm. We're so busy just on the grind, on the grind. This is what I do, this is what I gotta do. Now, first this, yeah, you know then. what we do. First this, <laughs> then, then that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the task analysis has yeah. helped, but in my own personal life, yeah. first this, mm -hmm. then that. And so we've gotten, um, but I think in general, we get on a grind yeah. and we forget the power of pause, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes everything is so focused on the spectrum mm -hmm. and maybe what they cannot do mm -hmm. or what they're lacking in doing mm -hmm. versus, oh, no, this is what they will do. Yeah. I told somebody one day, my bar is here mm -hmm. for this kiddo. Yeah. The bar is here, right? Mm -hmm. It's just how I show up. We won't get yeah. here until we first start. We're going to yeah. start here, yeah. you know. But, I mean... I, I have high expectations. Um, why not? Yeah, right? why not? And so I know a couple of kiddos that I feel could really mm -hmm. handle like a role on a TV show. Oh, yeah. For real. Oh, yeah. Or put them in an acting class because sometimes, let's forget about a kid on the autism. Sometimes just when I'm working with a kid, youth at risk mentoring, a kid that's shy. Mm -hmm. Okay? Heck. Adults that are shy. Yeah. There are people I want to work with and just say, here, let me help you mm -hmm. own your power. Yeah. 
And that's what it is for me. I, I just love for people to feel good. Yeah. I love for people mm -hmm. to go in this space and just feel empowered mm -hmm. and that they can. I think I can. I think I can instead of the opposite. Yeah. I think I can. Yeah. And let, again, let me digress. I mm -hmm. remember my first photo shoot back into the industry. I literally had a moment. Mm-hmm. Well, I started crying mm -hmm. a little bit and I had to ask them to give me a minute um, it's like I had to look back of the tragedy I went through and then see where I was at that moment mm -hmm. and that I was back yeah you know what I mean I wasn't perfect mm -hmm. or anything like that yeah. I, there was still work I had to do yeah and but I was so appreciative that I was in that moment. Yeah. You know, and I was just appreciative. And so I just kinda like, wow, I'm here. And I love that I had a photographer and my makeup artist. They were like, it's okay. Yeah. Because sometimes when you've gone through some things, mm -hmm. you've overcome some things, you've yeah. survived some things, yeah. you have to just sit and go, woo. <laughs> You know, look yeah. at me now. Yeah, right? yeah. Look at me now. And that's really yeah. how I was and thankful. But I I don't wish that just for me. No. no. When I was young, there was this poem that said, you only live once, but if you live life right, once is enough. No. Yeah. That's what I'm always thinking, mm -hmm. right? So I, I just want families to feel that you know, my child can mm -hmm. until I absolutely 1000% know they cannot. Yeah. Go in with that mindset of they have the ability and you believe it. I mean, who's going to, as a parent, like who's going to believe it other than you? You got to for your kid, right? And, right, right. And right. I think that that's really good for even individuals on the spectrum themselves. I think sometimes we all as people can feel down oh, yeah. and we go, it gets to that mind of like, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not right. going to be able to do that. Right. And to look back and see how far you have come. A lot of adults on the spectrum have had to overcome. Wow. We work with kids that are going through really tough things, but we have to remember these kids grow up and they're adults. And I point. actually do um, support a few adults yeah, as well. I do too. I coach them. Yeah. I skill them yeah. as well. And as an adult on the spectrum to look back and say, I've gotten through all of both the strengths and the deficits, the challenges that have, I've, they've had to overcome. And mm -hmm. I think that's like a really good thing for them to look back on too. And it's like yeah. that whole look at yeah. me now, like, right. yeah. look at me now, mm -hmm. look at me now. Right. And, and it's funny because, well, let's look at you now. <laughs> I mean, here you are, yeah. Miss California, 2021, and you're going through this or have gone through yeah. this. With your sister yeah. being on the spectrum mm -hmm. and how you still show up for her and your yeah. family in the midst of it. Yeah. So how has that journey even been? Yeah, I mean, so for me, I've been competing in pageants for the past 10 years and not every pageant has been a win. I've went through a lot of loss and I, I don't even want to call it a loss because it's been a learning opportunity right. each time. And I hope that's how like individuals on the spectrum also see their their life is like there's going to be setbacks but it's not a setback it's a setup for your comeback mm -hmm. and comeback, yes. <laughs> and that for me being able to do my pageants and continue my education and volunteer with different organizations that support autism while also being an older sibling to my sister who has autism those are all things that have given me strength to push through those difficult setbacks, setups. Right. And um, that's why I'm here. That's the whole reason that I miss California is because that I have this passion in me. Um, when you become a title holder, you dedicate yourself to a year of service. Well, I've been dedicating over 10 years Ooh. of myself to the autism You're like, oh, community. I'm already there. Yeah. I was ahead yeah. of the game. Okay. To the autism community. And while I don't have autism, I have someone that is so significant in my life that does and I want to be a voice for those that may not have it I want to give a voice mm -hmm. for those 
that can speak on it. So that's why I want other individuals with autism to be able to come and, and use our platform as a way to uplift voices. I want doctors to be able to come on, different lifestyle coaches. I mean, I think that you and me over the course of this show are going to be able to give a lot of parents resources, a lot of individuals themselves resources, and be, just people that want to be involved in the community and maybe started out where I started as just an advocate. Maybe you know somebody with autism and you just want to learn more and do your part as a part of the community. Give us the statistics. I know it, but I yeah. want you to tell our audience yeah. the statistics in case people think, well, this isn't about my world. A friend brought up to me one day, just documenting how I've kind of always been. Um, they said, Teal, you, were, you pointed out one time when our kids were like preschool, uh, I had an issue with something at the school and they said, um, when I told one parent, the parent was like, oh, I haven't, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know about, like, that's not their, mm -hmm. her issue. Or it wasn't, she didn't find that to be her issue. Mm -hmm. And it was a, it was an issue that could have been anyone's issue. Yeah, yeah. For instance, mm -hmm. say like if um, a kid um, called another kid the N-word, mm -hmm. for instance. And mm -hmm. it, it might have been something like that. Mm -hmm. And the parent was like, oh, that's not, not my issue. But they didn't seem to be mm. bothered by it. Yeah. And you know, and I remember saying to them, it, it shouldn't have to have been your yeah. child. The fact mm -hmm. that it happened to, to a, a child mm. should be an issue. Yeah. So I've always kind of been that person, yeah. you know, like, it's not about just me. I'm trying mm -hmm. to be a voice of many, yes. right? So with that said, I think people you may not know about yeah. autism, know someone with autism, but... You may not know mm -hmm. that the person really has autism because of we mentioned in the, the yeah. last episode, the previous episode, was that a lot of people do not reveal it, yeah. especially family members. Mm -hmm. There's Sometimes there's some embarrassment. There's just some isolation that yeah. they feel, and they don't talk about it, yeah. right? But let's. I'll have you bring up the statistics mm -hmm. because it's, it's insane yeah. that the numbers are actually... You yeah. know, like it used to be one out of a hundred, yeah, and now it's one out of what? Yeah, so now so it, just about ten years ago, it was like one out of a hundred and sixty, and as of twenty twenty, it's now one out of fifty four individuals will be diagnosed with autism. And what that means is that all of us, every single one of us, at some point in our lives, will either know or come in contact with an individual with autism. For my family, that's my little sister. For others, it may be somebody that you work with, might be a neighbor, it might be your cousin's daughter. You never know, but it's likely that you will come in contact with somebody that has autism. And that's why it's important for everybody. So you might be sitting at home saying like, I don't, like what is autism? And I think the other statistic is that like 80% of people have heard of autism, but only 40% of people actually know what it is. So you might hear the word autism and go, yeah, I've heard that before. Do you know what it is? Right. Maybe not. Right. And I think that's another thing that this podcast can be for people is just an educational source. Absolutely. And I think that's really important because the numbers are going up. More and more people are being diagnosed with autism and our society kind of has to change. I think that the neurodiversity movement is something that's really huge because we are, as a society, going into a movement of acceptance and diversity and we have to kind of see it as the next movement where we've accepted people of different sexualities of different cultures of different races and now we are coming into this acceptance of people that have different brains or different thought patterns mm. and i think that that's something that really needs to be talked about and given light to because yeah. we're all going to know somebody that has autism again I'm, I'm looking at some of my notes mm -hmm. on my phone so in the previous episode I did mention about the movie it was a it, it's a book but mm -hmm. now it's a movie mm -hmm. the reason I jump and someone told me about it I finally watched mm -hmm. it last night just so I could I was late on it just <laughs> so I could be able to bring it up for um, the podcast mm -hmm. and um, yeah it, it was so amazing of the people that they followed and talked to of how they were expressing mm -hmm. um, from why they stem um, from their aggression. Um, mm -hmm. But I love that one of the gentlemen had mentioned, um, I believe we can change the conversation about autism mm -hmm. by being a part of the conversation. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
as we had Caitlin here, who yeah. was just so amazing. Yeah. Her sister was amazing. <laughs> but I think that's one of the things, again, that we want to do. We, we want people to be invited to the table yes. of all ages mm -hmm. who's willing to, sh you know, yeah. express themselves yeah. and be, a, you know, their authentic self mm -hmm. and no judgment. Yeah. And to, to talk about all of this, the light that they're in, because a lot of them from, from the movie, The Reason I Jump mm -hmm. would say, like, sometimes they just don't know what's happening to their body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They just don't yeah. know. And that's a good segue for, you mentioned about a gentleman mm. who was in an accident yeah. And again, when people don't know, and this is why from law enforcement to laws in general, yeah. we have to make it more evident of um, help in uh, the mental illness area. Yeah. yeah. Because the spectrum is for uh, several. It's not just yeah. autism. Yeah. So um, I'm going to let you talk yeah. about that when we don't know. Yeah. And then we're trying to ridicule and put down and, yes. you know. Yeah. So... Uh, a case that I've been following now for about a year has been Matthew Russian, and he is a autistic black um, male. I think at the time he might have been 18 or 19, but um, something that happens uh, really commonly with autism is called comorbidity, which is you have more than one diagnosis or um, more than one health issue. So with his autism, he also uh, had seizures. And so he was driving one day and had a seizure and it caused a non-fatal car accident. But from that incident, he was then sentenced to 50 years to life in prison. 50. 50. 50. Five zero. Five zero. <laughs> Five zero. Um, for a non-fatal car accident that he did not have any control over. And when his family, he himself, trying to explain to the court, trying to explain to the police officers, his condition completely written off. And the issue is not just the fact that he is looked at a certain way by the eyes of our justice system because of the color of his skin, but also because of his condition of having autism and having seizures. Completely, people don't want to listen, they don't care. It's seen as an excuse, and I'm sure that in the criminal justice system that it's one less thing that they could care about. And uh, it's just, mm -hmm. that's as sad as it is and how yeah. much we need to fix it, that's... And this is why it's so important for I hope that people will lean into mm -hmm. to the podcast more mm -hmm. and maybe we can help uh, provide mm -hmm. you know resources yeah. um, because that's very important yeah resources are so important uh, hence why I wanted um, my own you know nonprofit in theory yeah is uh, resources in, in advocacy and consulting because I feel like I was a single parent most of my yeah. life. So I feel like I was so blessed mm -hmm. to have certain resources mm -hmm. and be, you know, introduced to certain things that just gave me access, right? Yeah. Then I started saying, oh, well, but wonder if this person doesn't have it. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm definitely a connector. I yeah. wanna pay it forward to you. I, I don't even know how people are not connectors. Like, yeah. I'm the kind of person that's like, don't you want me to level up? Yeah. You leveled up? Yeah, don't you yeah. want me? You know, like, mm -hmm. you get a car? I you get a car, you get a car. Yeah. You get a car. <laughs> Like, I don't understand that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a firm believer, if you are so blessed mm -hmm. that your cup is overflowing, mm -hmm. who gets the overflow? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody mm -hmm. should always be... Yeah. That's a whole nother subject and a whole nother yeah. day. Don't yeah. even get me started there. But that's... but. This is why, again, having mm -hmm. this kind of platform, so I can control something that yes. I can that I can genuinely offer to someone on yes. a bigger level, yes. right? And a lot of that is, who do you call if the situation, if other people are in, like what Matthew was in? Yeah. Because so many families don't, don't. know what to do. Mm -hmm. I remember a kid a while back, I think it was in Whittier, California, mm -hmm. who was left on the bus. Mm. I don't know, the school I, bus. Yeah, yeah, I do remember and that. And he passed mm -hmm. away. I think it was hot. The driver yes, thought he yes, was I do oh remember that. Um, off the bus. Yeah. And they found him on the bus. Yeah. The one thing that I prayed for, literally, is that this family wouldn't just accept it as a, okay, it was an accident, and it was. Yeah. But they wouldn't just walk away from it because many times um families don't know what to do because of lack of resources yes 
Yeah. Or they've used so many resources, they're, mm-hmm. they're just tapped out. Yeah. They could be tapped out financially or all kind of things. Mm-hmm. And I was glad that I believe the family was able to get a lawyer yeah. and do all the things that they needed to do. Not that that would replace their child at all, yeah. but it sheds light and it mm-hmm. lets organizations and other entities know we're not just like, this is my family, we have this child who mm-hmm. has an intellectual delay, but it does not mean we don't know what to do. Yeah. It doesn't mean we don't have a voice. Don't dismiss me, like I yeah. said, don't like that, yeah. <laughs> don't dismiss me, don't dismiss me. Mm-hmm. And um, that's, again, that's what I'm hoping we can you know, help yeah. uh, families because I've talked to so many parents, especially moms who feel so isolated. Yeah. Yeah. And just when I was a single parent, I, you know, I was the neighbor that if I knew other single parents in, in, in uh, the property that I lived on, that I would always make like for the holidays, extra food for them, just because I just don't like people to have that feeling of being alone, mm-hmm. you know, um, or having no one, you know, I, I it just, it, I don't know, it just bothers me. But the other thing is, when you talked about listening, that is so big. Mm-hmm. So my issue is, just like you said, the uh, judicial system was no one was listening, yeah. is that we, again, pause and listen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Listen, yeah. that's helped. That's what I can honestly say this field has helped for me mm-hmm. individually, is that I can sit and we can talk about this yeah. subject <laughs> or like your issue, whatever mm-hmm. your issue is, I can, mm-hmm. I'm here to listen mm-hmm. as long as you need me to listen. Yeah. And I think another thing is just our ability to use our voice too. And in Matthew's case, I mean, so glad he's actually home now and because of people's voices and the power of social media and the power of, um, hopefully even platforms like this, um, his family was able to get him home. And I think they're still working on some legal disputes, but I know that he is no longer in prison. And how, how long did he have to be in there? He was, oh, he was in there for, I believe, months. I, I don't want to give an exact um, like record, but I know when he was, while he was in prison, uh, he had caught COVID and they did not treat him while he had COVID-19. Um, his mother was begging to have him released, at least so that he could be in a hospital and so many different advocacy groups were trying to boost his story to get it out there. Um, obviously I'm sure, I mean, you hadn't heard of it. I'm sure a lot of our listeners hadn't heard of it. Mm -hmm. Um, it was something that didn't get a lot of coverage. Well, we're going to start doing that. Yeah, I know. As much Mm -hmm. as we can, we will get the coverage on things that need to get coverage on in this space. Um, just because, but you know, again, not the, not just the tragic stories, but like the good stories. One story I do want to just um, mention as well, uh, alongside of this is the the ability that people like Matthew and others that are Mm -hmm. adults, because how old is Matthew? I think he's 19. Okay, yeah. yeah. So that um, the connections that they can have Mm -hmm. to community to consistently um, improve yeah. Their skill set, mm-hmm. their life. Mm-hmm. Um, I want families to know about like supported living and, yeah. and how they mm-hmm. uh, they can have supported living and have a roommate. Yeah. You know, um, live on their own. The ability mm-hmm. to live on their own. Um, they can have job coaches. Yeah. They can get jobs and have mm-hmm. job coaches. Um, I want to be able to highlight a company called J. Nolan Community Service mm-hmm. that provides that. Yeah. J. Nolan Community Services, J. A. Y. Nolan, N. O. L. A. N. Community Service, um, that provide all of that. They're one of the mm-hmm. longest running companies, I believe, that does that in supportive employment. So it'll help you get a job and then provide a job coach. Yeah, that's awesome. Then supported living, help you to mm-hmm. get an apartment and then provide still that support. And then community. Mm -hmm. So people, they take you out into the community and Mm -hmm. and just learn different things, you know? Um, You'd be amazed maybe, um, and you know, I look at the community, I wanna say this, I wanna look at that as like a big brother, big sister. Uh And then I think it gives some relief to the families. Absolutely, yeah. Gives relief to the families, like mom and dad don't have to be the ones or Mm -hmm. siblings or whomever, aunt and uncle. To, to take them to Starbucks, for instance, yeah. or to any coffee shop, per se. 
or to the grocery store. Now you have someone who takes you out into the community yeah. and that can help you buy your groceries and your food. Yeah. So this is again how we can help yeah. the community level up and it helps it helps yeah. us too. Absolutely. The work that we do helps us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. One last thing that I also wanted to just uh, tag on to about the community is an organization that I just wanted to highlight real quick that our listeners can go and, and support is the Autism Society. I know that in my community in Ventura County, um, this kind of just ties back into Matthew Russian's cases, the Autism Society actually does uh, police officer and firefighter training for um, the, wow. the community members so that they actually can understand what autism is, they can recognize the signs and have some training behind them to actually help those individuals. And I think something like that in every community would help individuals. Yeah. Yeah. It just goes to show you there's a lot of work to do. Yeah. And we have a lot that we can continue yeah. to talk about, but we're gonna make this a yeah. wrap yeah. for today. Um, and uh, we will see you again next time on Breaking Barriers in a ASD kind of world. I'm Till Marshawn. And I'm Amanda Ford. We'll see you next time.